Hey guys, and welcome back to another color grading tutorial. Today we're going to be editing. Today we're going to be editing uh, this photo to go from something like this to something like this in the style of the Instagram at Jacqueline Mikusa. Uh, you can see her on Instagram here. It would be great if you could go follow her. And also while you're on Instagram, go check me out on Instagram. I am Sebastian underscore JWB. But we're going to be trying to edit like this today. Now before we get into this video, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you guys. We are currently at 97,000 subscribers. So if you could go ahead and like and subscribe to this video, try and get us into 100,000, that would be absolutely incredible. I've dreamt of getting to 100,000 subscribers for God knows how long, and I can't believe that Matthew and I are this close to getting there. So if you could subscribe and you could get us to 100,000, it would mean the world to us. But without any further ado, let's get into today's tutorial. But you can see this is her Instagram here. It's a very, very white, um, uh, contrasty uh, color grade. So we're going to be basing... Um, our color grades today off the most recent photos here and we're going to be color grading this photo here. You can see uh, in this photo we've got lots of whites and uh, the black in the foreground which is really important when you're trying to emulate someone's style is you want to make sure that your photo that you take is also in a very similar style. So you can see here if we try and analyze what's going on in these sort of color grades you can see uh, it's a very cool um, very desaturated color grade and if you look in the highlights you can see there are some sort of tealy blues if you compare the highlights here to what it is on the white here we have a lot of tealy blue uh, and then in the shadows we have some dark blacks that are also slightly faded out you can see here uh, and we've also faded out the highlights as well ever so slightly um, also if you hear any background noise that's because I'm now at university and there is loads of noise on the street outside uh, so that is why Okay, so this is what we're going to be trying to do today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come straight up to here and come to the basic slider. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Lightroom, I have gone ahead and created you all a preset pack of 11 presets. Uh, one of these in here is the preset, or very similar to the preset we'll be making in this video today. Um, if I get around to it, I will also try and give you the free download for this uh, preset I do in the video. Um, but these presets here are all going to be different to the one I make in this video, uh, and they will all try and emulate her style. Uh, people have asked to see some before and afters. Uh, if you do go onto our website, the link will be down below. You will see some before and afters of what these presets look like. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, like I said, come to the basic panel, and we are just going to drop the temperature ever so slightly because we want our colors to be slightly cooler uh, than they are at the moment. So we're going to go for about minus four in the temperatures. Now, I think this is quite well exposed. So we're going to leave the exposure alone and we're going to come to contrast and we're going to increase that loads. So we're going to just whack it up basically to about plus 70%, something like that, quite a lot. Um, if you look at her photos, you can really see how much trash she's got in her photos. Um, it really does make the images pop. So we're going to be sticking with high contrast there. We're going to come to the highlights and we're also going to brighten up the highlights. She doesn't really have too much detail in her highlights. So plus 30 is probably a good bet for the highlights. And then for the shadows, we're going to try and leave those where they are because we're going to come back in a minute and we're going to darken those shadows and add some fade. So come down to the whites next and we're going to increase the whites to plus 30. All this is going to do is really lighten up the image without adjusting the exposure. It's going to get those whites in the image and it's going to make them really bright. Um, the reason we're doing this is if you look at the whites in the image here, she's got so much white in the image and we really want to make those whites pop. Okay, for the blacks, we're going to really mess around here and just drop this crazy down to minus 60. And already you can see this image is popping loads. It's got a load of contrast. It's actually kind of looking kind of uh, saturated now we've added all this contrast in. So we're going to come around and mess around with that in just a second. But if I press the backslash key, you can see what this image looked like before. And now you can see what it looks like just by making those minor adjustments in the basics panel. Um, you can really see how powerful Lightroom is. Uh, and it, obviously this does take a while to just sort of get an idea of what to do for each color grade. You really need to pick apart what her photos have and how she color grades to kind of emulate her style. Okay, so secondly, we're going to come down to clarity. And again, we're going to try and increase the amount of contrast in the photo. Now, for those of you who don't know, clarity is basically, it's kind of like a sharpness slash contrast, I like to think of it. Uh, if you increase the clarity, it's just going to make the blacks very, very sharp. You'll see what I mean like that. Um, obviously, that looks weird if you put too much clarity in. If you reduce it, it just looks really sort of weirdly fake and pastel like that. So you don't want to be doing either complete end of the spectrum, but you do want to increase the clarity a bit. So we're going to increase it to about 15 or 10% somewhere, somewhere around there. Now the next thing we're going to do is come to the vibrance. And like I said previously, while looking at her photos, they are very desaturated other than some specific colors in the photos. So here it's red. Um, and then in some of these photos, 
uh, you can see there are very specific colors red again here red um, red red she very li she likes to really make specific colors in the image pop in this case it's oranges and then what she's going to do is just desaturate everything else so in this image we don't really have too much of one color the only color we've really got is the orange kind of coming on here and here so we're going to leave the oranges but we are first of all going to come down to vibrance we're going to drop the vibrance to minus 10 and we're going to get the saturation and we're also going to drop that to about minus 10 as well minus 5 it's probably going to do just fine uh, in fact i think i've dropped the vibrance probably too far so we're going to just bring that back to about minus six as well so that's probably it for the uh, basics panel the next thing i want to do is uh, actually we're going to leave the tone curve and we're going to come back to that in just a second so you can kind of really see how much difference that makes we're going to work on the colors next uh, the colors is really where we're going to adjust this image and it's going to come to life so the hue saturation and luminance is basically hue will adjust the uh, type of color and will change each individual color channel so for example if i get reds if i drag it to one side it make it really pink if i drag it to the right it'll make it slightly more greeny uh, orange um, so you, you can see the idea here is we're just going to try and emulate her colors now for the reds oranges and yellows I tend to leave those alone as much as I can because if you start to edit it too much you saw when I dragged it all the way to the left you really do start to edit the skin tone and it can look kind of weird and fake so if I were you I wouldn't really drop the reds or oranges much below or increase much above 10 that being said we are going to drop the orange to about minus 4 and we're going to leave the yellows and greens where they are simply because there aren't very many yellows and greens in this image there's not really going to be much point adjusting these sliders now the blues and aquas are really where this image is going to change because there is actually a lot of blue in this image and like I said before if you look at her highlights she does have a fair amount of teal and blue in her highlights. So we're going to get the aquas and we're going to drop that down to probably about minus 50, minus 60, 70, somewhere around there. Quite low um, and you can see uh, this will change obviously for, photo, for your photos and uh, lots of other photos. Because this image is quite desaturated in the sky already we're not getting an over sort of overdone blue. If I drag the blues all the way down you can see we're going to get this very weird um, teal look. So we're not going to be doing that, we're just going for a very subtle teal look in the highlights but in this case to get it that subtle we do need to drag the aquas down quite a bit. You're going to need to adjust this depending on what you want in your image. Okay so the, for the blues we're also going to drag those down to about minus 20 and we're probably going to leave it there like that. As for the purples and magentas, probably just leave those alone. We don't really have much purple or magenta in this image. Now where we're really going to see a lot of difference is when we come to the saturation. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to desaturate everything else and we're going to leave some main colors in this image. Now, the main colors I've chosen are the oranges you can see here for the taxis and also the car lights as well. We're going to try and leave those colors in if we can and we're going to desaturate everything else. So first of all, you're going to come down to the colors you want to desaturate, which are going to be greens. I'm just going to drop those to about minus 88. There aren't really many greens, so that didn't make much difference. The aquas we're going to drop quite a bit, probably about minus 60, I think, and the blues a little bit less, about minus 35, minus 50, somewhere around there. You want to keep a bit of blue in so you do can still tell there is blue in the image. Um, as for the magentas and purples, also come and drop those down. Maybe the purples a little bit less because that does also affect the sky. Now, for the reds, oranges, and yellows, we're going to try and just increase and boost the oranges and yellows ever so slightly. I think I've overdone the oranges a bit. And then we're going to drop down the reds. So you can see if we press the backslash key, that's before and that is the after. That's the real difference we're making there. Uh, we can always come back in and increase the saturation in the yellows if you want to. You can then also come back up here and adjust the slider for the yellows. I want to make it slightly more orange, so I'm going to drag the yellow slider just to the left a bit, just to kind of make these colours a little bit more orange. Okay, I think I've actually made the image slightly too desaturated in the blue, so I'm going to bring back some of the blue saturation, and then we're going to move on to luminance. The luminance is basically just the brightness of each individual colour. So in this case, we're going to be trying to brighten up the uh, reds and sorry, the yellows ever so slightly, just to kind of make those colours pop a little bit more, because those are the ones we're trying to keep in this image. Now you can see here, if I increase the or oranges, it just makes her face look weird, so we're really going to leave the oranges and we're also going to leave the reds alone a bit. I may even end up dropping the oranges and reds just to kind of bring back some detail in her face. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is come down to the aquas and blues and we're again just going to drop the aquas and the blues just so we can see that little bit more detail in the sky just so you kind of get a better idea of what's going on in the image. Now for the purples and magentas we're going to leave those alone because there isn't actually any purple or magenta in this image. Now the last final bit of color grading we're going to be doing today is adding some split toning. Now split toning is basically going to choose a color 
in this range here and it's going to apply that to your highlights and then it's going to apply it to your shadows and all you're going to do is adjust the saturation to see how much you want to be uh, bled into your image. Um, you take a look at the, uh, you can really see that she's just, like I said earlier, got lots of blues in her image. This is a really good example of how much blue is in her image. Even her skin tone here, you can see there is a lot of blue going on. So our uh, split toning, we're mainly going to be focusing on the blues. Now a little trick for you, if you press Option or Alt on your keyboard and then drag the hue slider, you can see what color you're going to be adding to your highlights. Now I'm going to drag it up to about 230, I think somewhere around there, just to kind of choose that nice sort of magenta blue just to put into our highlights. And then we're going to just drag up that, I'll just let go of Alt, so now you can't see it anymore. The saturation is on zero, so we want to bleed some of that in, so we're just going to drag the saturation up to about 10%, just so you can kind of see some of that color. Now the next thing is the shadows, again, press Option or Alt on your keyboard, and we're just going to drag this up, and I'm going to go for a more uh, teal kind of color for the shadows, around 160 I think is good. And then we're gonna get the saturation and we're gonna increase that about the same amount to six or 7%. Now if I turn off the split turning, you can see it does make a subtle difference. It's kind of made it slightly cooler and you can see how much difference that makes to your image. It's a very subtle change, but it is very, very powerful if you uh, do use it. Now, in this, for the rest of this, we're not really gonna be using anything in camera calibration. There's no real need. Camera calibration can edit the photos a little bit more, but because there's not too much color in this image to start off with, camera calibration isn't really gonna do all too much. So I'm just gonna close up the split turning there. And now we're gonna do the last final thing, which is the tone curve. This is really gonna boost the image into the final stages of what her images look like and give it that nice. First of all, we're gonna do our standard S curve. We are going to increase the highlights like that and we're going to come down to the shadows and we're going to decrease the shadows as well and try and keep it to these guidelines here you want to adjust on these guidelines really then you want to get another point just about here and just drop and crush the blacks a little bit more because she does have very crushed dark blacks then this is where we are really going to get a lot of change come and drag the final point and we're going to introduce what's known as fade uh, if you drag it up you can really see what fade is it kind of flattens those blacks and makes them kind of gray uh, in this case i've added too much fade so i'm just going to drop that off a little bit and then all, all you're going to do is just keep on adjusting moving it around until you get a look that you like i'm not going to spend too much time on this because um, we'll be here all day but really you can just spend as much time on this as you want to kind of get the look feel that you're going for um, Again, you can come up to the highlights and then get the highest point and also drag that down to fade out the highlights very slightly as well, like that. Now, I think I've probably overdone that ever so slightly, but you get the idea. That's basically what we're doing for this image. If I come back to look at her images and these images, we are looking very similar. I'm beginning to think that I do need to actually, I'm beginning to think that we do need to actually reduce some of the blue in this image. So I'm gonna come up to here and we're actually just gonna reset the temperature and then we're gonna come back down to the HSL and we're gonna decrease the saturation in the yellows and the oranges as well. Okay, so there we have it. That is basically it for today's color grading tutorial. Um, you can really see how much difference it makes just sort of messing around with these colors and if you can always come back and change the colors if it's not what you like. Um, there we go, that's it guys. I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. Like I said, there will be a link, the top link in the description if you wanna go ahead and purchase this preset pack here. That will be on the website uh, with a load of before and after images. There are 11 presets in that pack and you can go ahead and copy this uh, preset here that I've just given you uh, so you can go ahead and use that if you want to as well. If I do get around to it, this will also be a free download for you, this one that we did in today's video. But other than that, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Go and check out other stuff we've got on our channel and it'd be great if you could like and subscribe.